In this video, I want to talk about proven methods to increase GABA production naturally. We will go over the necessary cofactor nutrients and biochemistry behind GABA and how to optimize it. To start off, what even is GABA? GABA stands for gamma aminobutyric acid and it is a neurotransmitter like serotonin or dopamine. It is one of the body's main inhibitory neurotransmitters, so it calms down brain and nervous system activity. It does this by blocking cell signals and reducing excessive stimulation and excitement of nerve cells. Just as a side note, benzodiazepines, which are a family of anxiety medications, produce their effect by enhancing the binding of GABA to its receptors. So they basically boost what your body is already doing naturally. But benzos are highly addictive and not suited for long-term use. So many people want to look for a natural way to improve GABA production and utilization in the body. So let's see what we can do here through foods and supplements. And let's start with GABA production. GABA is produced naturally in your body through a series of biochemical steps that basically involve the conversion of the amino acid glutamate to GABA. Glutamate is not only an amino acid, but a neurotransmitter itself. But unlike GABA, it's a stimulating neurotransmitter, so the direct opposite of GABA. In a healthy, low-stress environment, your body will always convert enough glutamate to GABA to ensure a healthy balance between your stimulating and your calming neurotransmitters. Here is an overview of how this works. Step one is that you consume dietary protein. And for the digestion of that protein, you need zinc and certain B vitamins, especially B1, B3, and B6 for stomach acid production so your body can break down and digest that protein. Because in step two, that protein is then split into individual amino acids. Of these amino acids, it will then either directly take glutamate or if your diet doesn't contain enough of it, it can also convert glutamine into glutamate. Foods that are high in glutamate include aged cheeses and cured meats, for example, Parmesan cheese. Then in step three, the glutamate needs to be converted to GABA. Because remember, glutamate itself is stimulating, so you definitely don't want excessive levels of it that overstimulate you. This is where something called decarboxylation comes into play. It removes a carboxyl group from glutamate, after which you are left with GABA. And this step requires a vitamin B6 in its active form P5P. So all in all, we can say that the most important cofactor nutrients here are zinc and certain B vitamins, especially B1, B3, and B6 for stomach acid production, and then B6 again to convert glutamate to GABA. In both cases, you need the B6 to be present in its bioactive form P5P. Also, even if your stomach acid production is fine, you still need zinc because it enhances GABA release and also regulates GABA receptors. I say this because there is a subsection of people who is chronically deficient in both zinc and P5P. They have pyroluria, which I explain in more detail in a different video. And this deficiency and inability to produce enough GABA explains why they have such a low stress tolerance. A chronic zinc deficiency can also happen when you have copper overload. For example, online you will often find reports of zinc supplements that led to anxiety in someone. But that's not because of the zinc itself. It's a calming nutrient, but because of the copper that is being stirred up by taking the zinc. So if you believe that you don't just have acute but chronic problems with GABA production, definitely look into pyroluria and copper overload. Of course, fixing these nutrient imbalances can take a while. So I also want to talk about a second faster option, which is consuming GABA directly. GABA can be found naturally in certain foods, and here is a list that you can screenshot. But to be honest, I never noticed a significant calming effect eating these. And you also need to be careful because certain foods like tomatoes have a lot of glutamate. And it's not always clear if the GABA content was calculated based on the glutamate content or not. Again, if the glutamate isn't converted correctly in your body, the net effect will be stimulating and not calming. So generally, to quickly test your reaction and tolerance to GABA, it's better to go with supplements. There are two main forms of GABA supplements, either synthetic, so completely made in a lab, 
or through natural fermentation. And the most famous trademark fermented GABA supplement is Farmer GABA. There are some studies that show an advantage of natural over synthetic GABA supplements, and I have to agree from personal experience. Synthetic GABA supplements never did anything for me, so I thought GABA supplements in general didn't work. But when I tested fermented GABA supplements, I definitely noticed an effect almost instantly. This is also interesting because for a long time it was believed that pre-made GABA cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. So researchers often thought that supplements couldn't have an effect on you. But they definitely do, at least in some people. To quote one study, there is some evidence in favor of a calming effect of GABA food supplements. We suggest that any effects of GABA food supplements on brain and cognition might be exerted through blood-brain barrier passage or more indirectly via an effect on the enteric nervous system. So to see if it also works for you, I would definitely suggest you give GABA supplements a try, preferably the fermented ones. I usually take one to three capsules of 200 milligrams per day. It's definitely not going to eliminate chronic anxiety, but it can help in acute stress. Other natural GABA boosters that are worth checking out include L-theanine, which is a natural amino acid found in green tea. It's also said to be a calming amino acid because it has an affinity for GABA receptors. It binds to them and increases the GABA transmission. Next, magnesium, which also binds to GABA receptors similar to L-theanine, and it relaxes muscles and has a calming effect on the nervous system. Magnesium is really one of the most important minerals, and since deficiency is so widespread, it is definitely something you want to get enough of every day. And lastly, anything that reduces stimulating neurotransmitters. Earlier in the video, I explained how glutamate and GABA are the yin and yang of the nervous system. Glutamate increases and GABA decreases signal transmission. But there are other neurotransmitters besides glutamate that you also want to take into consideration if you suffer from an overstimulated nervous system. Adrenaline dominance is the first that comes to mind. Many people nowadays are adrenaline dominant. And this can have many reasons, like the aforementioned copper overload, or overmethylation, folate deficiency, or a slow COMT gene expression. All of these are topics that I cover in different videos, but the essence is that to get the best calming effect, don't just seek to boost GABA, but also reduce your stress by fixing your adrenaline dominance if you have one. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video gave you a good overview of how GABA works in the body and how you can naturally boost your production and utilization of it. If you like this video, then I will see you in the next one.